There is a growing frustration between the American uh, public and many of our, our agencies. Um, and in, in, in your lead up, that you're absolutely right. It's because some of our senior leaders are criticizing them. But there have been some very senior leaders that have made some mistakes within these within these agencies. Uh, one of the things that I try to remind people is that the leadership and the rank and file are two different things. You know, the men and women in the CIA and the FBI, they're working hard every single day, putting themselves in harm's way, oftentimes being away from their family in order to protect us and, and keep us safe. And so it's important to have have, have that distinction. Um, but also we got to re remember those leaders of those organizations um, with, with great power comes great responsibility and a level of transparency of why decisions are made, especially when those decisions are, are unique and have, have never been done. And so so there is, uh, it, it's, 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 it's concerning uh, when the American public um, lacks trust in, in institutions, uh, but also those that are trying to build these institutions institutions um, and going to lead these institutions need to articulate their vision of how are they going to populate this, why these, these agencies um, are important. But what about the actual recurring allegation that the Department of Justice, for instance, and the FBI target Republicans specifically or unfairly or not equally to the way they think about uh, Democrats? Do you believe that to be true? Well, let me be clear on DOJ prosecution of Donald Trump, especially when it comes to the classified documents that he had at his hotel. I think it's outrageous. Yes, I, I recognize you're innocent until proven guilty. But if even one of those allegations in the in in the indictment is true, uh, to, to me that's outrageous. As someone who put himself in harm's way in order to collect many of those um, um, secrets that were in those documents, um, when it comes to the the cavalier, how cavalier he is in 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 treating those in, those documents that shows our our capabilities, that if this information got into the wrong hands, it would lead to a loss of life, and to the men and women that are serving and put putting themselves in harm's way to those that have family members serving in these agencies. We should all be shocked and upset um, because of what's happening there. So 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 this is um, if, if this if this if this case goes forward and these allegations are true, then um, he should he should he's not above the law. Um, that's that's point one. Point two, I, I think the frustration um, with uh, entities within Department of Justice goes all the way back to the 2016 um, uh, election and the allegations of collusion uh, with, with the Russians. Um, Adam Schiff would go off and all, all the time uh, talking about there was evidence of collusion, but none of that came forward in the Mueller report, in the Mueller investigation. And so that is the, that was kind of the beginning uh, of, of the frustration. And that's why I've been saying that the Department of Justice needs to talk about transparency or why they have done certain things and, and not others, so that, that they can show that they are not trying to, um, you know, target Republicans and and let uh, Democrats um, off the hook. But there have been um, instances where senior leaders have done things that that were uh, not in in normal practice. Let me ask you about um, you declaring your candidacy a couple of weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. The debate, the first debate, is six weeks away. Uh, I, I want to ask you if you want to be on that stage. At the moment, you haven't met the requirements, and one of those is stipulating a, or signing a loyalty pledge that says that you will support whoever the candidate is. You are troubled by the idea of, of that being Donald Trump, and you don't want to make a commitment to that. Yesterday, I had Stuart Stevens on, who said that people like you and Chris Christie and Asa Hutchinson, who take strong positions about this, uh, it's, it's, it's morally correct, but will you stick with those st uh, stipulations if they don't allow you onto the debate stage? Uh, look, my, my position is my position, and 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 yes, I am working in order to get the forty thousand donors um, and and making the case to to forty thousand individual donors that hey, if you want to see someone on the debate stage who has experience in foreign policy, domestic policy, and technology, go to herdforamerica.com and give me at least one dollar to get that on there. But I'm not changing my opinion on on the the loyalty pledge. Um, I cannot, I, I can't lie in order to get access. Um, to a, a, a microphone. I, I, I can't do it. And my issue is not 
with, uh, you know, supporting the Republican nominee. My issue is with supporting Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a proven loser. He hasn't won an election since 2016. He lost the House in 2018. He lost the Senate and the White House in 2020. He prevented Republicans from having a red wave in 2022. Heck, he hasn't even agreed to sign the the the, the, the loyalty pledge um, either. And and we all know. It, I've been telling Republicans if. You elect Donald Trump for the Republican nominee, then we are willingly giving Joe Biden four more years because Joe Biden will be uh, Donald Trump. And so that's my my issue. Um, sticking to my guns, I knew this. This and 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 in the end, I've taken one oath, right? And that's to protect and and defend the Constitution. I take one pledge, and that's when I put my hand on my heart and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. And I took one vow, and that's to my amazing and wonderful wife. Um, six months ago, when we got married and I'm going to keep it at that. Congratulations on that. Let's talk for a moment about abortion. Uh, it, it is not proved to be a winning political strategy uh, for Republicans. You have said in the past that you would support a 15-week ban. Would you actually support a federal legislative ban on abortion after 15 weeks? If, uh, if, the con if Congress put a 15-week ban on my desk, um, I would sign it. Uh, but right now, it looks like that's not a, a likelihood. And, and one of the things I think that we should also be talking about is maternal health and neonatal health, access to birth control. Um, it's crazy how, um, especially black women that have a, a child or, or, or childbearing in the United States, like how often they die. It's like the, the, the stats are equivalent to places in the developing world. Um, that's unacceptable. Uh, we should be concerned with that, and we should be focusing on those issues um, as well. Uh, is there, does it concern you the way you, you've mentioned the things about abortion bans that concern you, but it is something that, that conservative Republicans in particular are leaning into, despite the fact that public, uh, public support of the kinds of things that are happening in some states, including your own, are unpopular with voters at large? Look, the way you win elections is talking about issues that um, people want to hear about. And what I've learned crisscrossing the country uh, in the last two and a half weeks before that, uh, people want to hear candidates that have a vision for the future and not complaining about the past, that are talking about issues about putting food on the table, a uh, roof over their head, and making sure the people that they're healthy, happy, and safe. Uh, those, that's a, a, a where our, our focus should be. They're worried about making making sure their kids have a, have a great education. Uh, these are winning issues that give us an opportunity in, in, in November. Um, with, with President Biden's polling numbers so bad, um, we have an opportunity to win, and we got to put, the Republicans have to put forward uh, the right can in order to take advantage of this opportunity. So you've given me the other side of the answer, but the other side of the answer is, would you tell your Republican colleagues, stop with the abortion stuff? It's, it's, it's actually going to be hurtful? Well, I don't tell anybody not to say anything or do anything. Um, and so uh, if my Republican colleagues are going to do and talk about what they want to talk about. Um, and that's not my responsibility to tell them what to do. Uh, but I've outlined some of the issues that I think are winning strategies and things that we should be putting forward um, our vision for the future on. Well, Heard, good to talk to you again. Thank you for joining us. And let us know when you're in town. And let's do this in studio.